Okay, good afternoon, Ten Hubble. Welcome to episode four now of our Mr. Morphy's Home Learning Series. Um, I'm just going to start off with a bit of housekeeping um, with the work that uh, has been put on Go for Schools. Um, so we've got a few of the pictures coming in on Teams, so keep those coming. Um, so that's the kind of submitting of the work. Uh, I've got to say, there's been some really, really good extended creative tasks. Uh, with the mythical creatures, say so really good job of those. Keep keep those coming. Um, the review task um, is based on the work we've done in our last couple of lessons. That's on Seneca. And of course, the new topic uh, which has been set this week um, is on distribution and abundance, and looking at how we can estimate population size and things like that. So, just as a reminder, um, make sure that you've done the kind of pre-reading on two six two. 263 of the textbook and made some kind of brief summary notes and had a go at questions uh, before you start this video okay because we're going to start putting a few things into practice um, with this this kind of supporting uh, youtube video all, all the work is due on monday um and i just want to go over this kind of last notice um and the message for you guys so next week it's been uh, decided the whole of year 10 uh, we'll be doing um some science assessments like it says here there's nothing to worry about uh, just a chance for you to kind of show off what you've learned over the last few weeks and for us to kind of check in with, with kind of how you're doing. So um, that will be next week, okay? It will more than likely be to the towards the end of next week. So you've got plenty of time to kind of brush up um, on the topics that we've done um, so far, all right? If you've got any questions about that, please do just get in touch. So let's get stuck into the lesson today. Um, we're going to kick off with some knowledge recall questions, which I'll get up nice and big for you to see. There we go. So, um, ooh, there we go. So, knowledge recall questions, focusing on kind of key terms here. So, if you want to just pause the video um, and have a go at these questions, try the kind of challenge question as well. So, pause the video, have a go. You can write the answers down or you can just have a think and, and or discuss them out loud. Okay, so question number one, define the term habitat. A habitat is within the ecosystem. Um, if we think of a particular habitat, it might be the forest floor, for example, okay, of a particular wood. That, if we think about habitat as a specific environment that the organism lives in. Uh, define the term population. Population is a group of um, organisms of the same species. And that then links to our idea of communities with different populations being interdependent on each other. The difference between biotic and abiotic factor, well, biotic is living, abiotic is non living. Name three biotic factors. Uh, we could have disease, uh, competition, predation would be fine. Um, name three abiotic factors temperature, wind speed, water, light, any of those things that you looked at last week. So living versus non-living. And if you want to have a go at this challenge question, describe and explain how one biotic factor may impact on the population of a particular species. And a good way to do this challenge question is to think of maybe a, a particular um, food chain, okay, a particular organism. Could there be a new predator that um, is introduced or a disease that maybe wipes out that specific species? So have a go at that if you'd like to. Um, so we're looking at organisms and their environment, and what we need to better do today is to, to consider how we would go about estimating population size um, if we were to do some sampling on the school field, for example. And unfortunately, because we're in isolation, you know, we can't necessarily go out onto the school field, but um, we're going to do like a virtual kind of um, estimation of daisies on a virtual school field so bear with me you're going to see how this goes um, if you've got something at home to use you know maybe fashion some equipment because well, we're going through the equipment you might be able to do this as form as a form of your exercise but we'll leave that up to you but we're going to do a virtual um, form of this today and we need to be able to discuss understand the effects of Kind of abiotic and biotic factors on the distribution of organisms and be able to estimate population size and things like that. So you've got to have a title in your books, um, Organisms and Their Environment, and we're going to hone in on, on some key skills today. So first of all, it's, it's important to consider um, the things that we've been thinking about. So, you know, what do we need to survive? What do particular organisms need to survive? We know that 
um, various factors, abiotic and biotic, can, can affect the distribution and the numbers of organisms in a particular environment. So if you take just a few minutes now, just to pause, choose one of these organisms and consider what your ma the main needs would be for the following organism. What would they need to survive? What would they need to thrive? So pause the video, have a think. Okay, so if we take the dandelion, for example, you know, dandelion is a plant, it's going to need space, when we think about competition, it is going to need be reliant on the kind of the abiotic uh, factors, water, sunlight, things like that. And depending on where that dandelion is growing, it may have to compete with larger plants, you know, if it's growing near a tree, for example. So we know that these biotic and abiotic factors can affect the distribution, the numbers of, of those dandelions growing. Equally for a lion, if you think about the availability of food as a, as a biotic factor that can affect the distribution and the population numbers of the lion. So we need to have this in mind, okay, building on our knowledge from, from last week and then putting this into practice about, well, how could we go about studying the distribution of particular organisms in their environment? So organisms need resources, okay, physical factors as we know, temperature, light, Availability of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water nutrients will have an impact on the distribution. And we're going to focus really on plants, okay, in, in this particular lesson. We know that these are the abiotic factors that can affect the distribution um, of these organisms, and that's building on from last week. Now, in order to estimate population size, we need to kind of brush up on our mat. And you guys, being a top set, you'll be able to do this with ease. In fact, I would imagine by the time I've finished talking, you've probably already worked out the mean, the mode, and the median, and the range of these set of numbers. Pause the video, have a go. So, of course, the mean, we add the numbers up, we divide by how many there are. The mode is the most common, the median is the middle valley, and the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest values. And we need to have these basic math skills, very basic math skills in order to be successful in calculating and estimating population size. Now, there are two kinds of data that we can gather. Um, and we're going to imagine that we are on the school field and we're going to estimate uh, the number of daisies on the school field. I want you to try and use your imagination here. And if we can write down these two types of data into your exercise books, because we need to be aware of these key terms. So first of all, we can describe data as as qualitative. We could go onto the school field and we could say, look, there are lots of daisies uh, in the school field. I want to pause the video and think about what's good and what's bad about qualitative data. Qualitative data can be very useful, it can be very descriptive and give us lots of rich, meaningful, kind of descriptive data. However, it may lack accuracy and a kind of detail as we're not using numbers. Quantitative data, on the other hand, uses numbers. Okay, we, can we can decipher the difference between these two key terms. If we think about qualitative, you know, the, we often hear the quality of written communication, you know, descriptive. So quantitative is um, non-numerical. Quantitative is numerical. Okay, so you can add that into your notes just to understand the difference between these two types of data. Now, of course, we could go onto the school field and count every single daisy and would say there's 5,087 daisies on the school field. Really useful, gives us a very specific number. We can analyse that data, we can, um, you know, we can use, use the data for various calculations, gives us a quantifiable um, number. Um, but there's not a lot of detail there, it doesn't really tell us a huge amount. So where qualitative data has lots and lots of detail descriptively, um, quantitative data lacks that. Quantitative data gives a specific measure of your subject, but quantitative data only gives you a rough idea. So quantitative is usually more useful, it provides us with more detail. Now then, what we're going to do now is try and have a go at est we're going to imagine that we're on the school field, and what we've got here is a is a virtual school field. Okay, I'm going to show you a slide. You're going to see it for 15 seconds, and what I want you to do, okay, and don't cheat, don't pause the video, right? I want you to um, have a look at the, the the virtual daisy field and 
See if you can estimate the number of daisies on the school field. Here we go. Don't pause the video. Let it play. Okay, so how many did you count? Now, you may have found it quite difficult okay, to just count every single day in the school field. And of course, if we were to go on the real school field, it would take forever to do that. Right? It is really difficult to do. I want you to jot down the number of days that you've got. We need a quantitative estimate. So we, a better way to do this is to estimate the number of days by using a sample. So, write your first estimate down. Then I want you to try again, seeing if this will help. And I'm going to put like a little grid um, up on the, um, on the school field and see if, the, see if you can use the grid to help you to estimate uh, more accurately the number of days on the school field. Here we go. Okay, so here's your estimate for the same. Did the grid help? There are 78 daisies. Now, you can pause the video and think about, well, how can we use the grid to help us? If you were asked to count the number of daisies in the school field, it would be impractical to count each one. How could you use the grid method to get an accurate, reproducible estimate, one that would get similar results each time? I want you to think about how you could use that grid. Try and make a rough plan of how you get a better estimate okay, that is more efficient for us to do time-wise. Have a think, pause the video, see if you can come up with a rough plan of how you use that grid. Okay, so use that kind of rough method to estimate and the number of days is on this school field. It might be that you make a couple of samples, perhaps you do a calculation. I'm not going to try and give, I'm not going to give too much away because we're going to go through the method in a minute. Right, use your own method to try and estimate this daisy field. Okay. So how many daisies were there? Jot your answer down. Did your method? So there were actually 103 daisies on the school field. How close were you? Okay, I'll be interesting if you want to go on teams and you can post your method, see if you're close to the actual method. Now, the first method we're going to talk about is something called random sampling using a quadrat. And a quadrat is simply a square metal um, square uh, grid that can be placed on the school field in random coordinates to estimate the number of daisies on the school field. And we there's a set kind of method that we can use. So first of all, we would randomly select at least three quadrats and count how many daisies are in the school field. Now, what we would do is first of all, we might set up some coordinates. Okay, we'd map out the kind of school field and we set up some coordinates. Now to randomly select at least three quadrats, we would maybe use a number generator and that would generate some coordinates on the school field and we would place our square metal frame and would count the number of daisies in that sample. Now of course, we want to be able to repeat that sample and get a mean score for each of those samples we take. So we, we calculate the mean number from our, maybe we repeat that three to five times, and we calculate the mean number. Okay, of our three samples that we've got from the school field. That will give us an estimate of five daisies per quadrat. And then all we need to do to estimate the total number in the school field is to multiply that mean by the number of quadrats that would actually fit into the school field. And that would give us an estimate. Okay. So we randomly select three quadrats. We can use that using coordinates around the number generator. Count the number of daisies in each quadrat, calculate the mean and multiply the mean by the number of quadrats that actually fit into the school field. And we've got here a couple of top tips in using your quadrat. Should you want to have a look? Okay. So that's our first method, random sampling using a quadrat. 
what we're going to look at now is a second method. Okay? And this is a really interesting method called so systematic sampling along a transect. And we use this, we still use a quadrant okay, to, to look at the uh, population size, but this time we often use it to look at trends. Okay? And we're going to look at here, it's a slightly different example. So how do you think the abundance of bluebells changes depending on how deep into the woodland you would go? Now, we know that bluebells like to be in kind of shaded areas, so think about how, what would we see in terms of the number of bluebells as we get further in to that woodland. Have a little think, pause the video. Now, by placing one quadrat each metre along a, a straight line, you can find a percentage cover from different transects, and this is called sampling along a transect. We often use this to show a trend. Okay. Now, I'll kind of, we're going to do a, a, an exam question uh, towards the end based on this. The rough method okay, is that we would first of all set out our transect. And the transect is literally just a strip um, of land that we've set out. We might have it by 1 metre by 12 metres. And then we would systematically sample along that transect. So every metre we'd place down our place down our quadrat and we'd calculate the percentage cover. And what we might see then is as we get further and further into the woodland, the little percentage cover of bluebells kind of increases as we go through. And we can start to look at trends. This is our second method. We're going to have a look at an exam question and a model answer for this. And you would have read about this in the textbook as well. So we've got our different sampling methods, random sampling and systematic sampling. Okay, at this point you can pause the video um, to make some extra notes here. What we're going to do now is have a look at some data. Okay, so this um, particular bluebell um, example, looking at the abundance of bluebells in the woodland, we can start to think about the patterns. So let's say we imagine, imagine the scenario, we're walking into the woodland, and uh, we set up three transects in different parts okay, of the woodland. We wanted to uh, see how um, reliable our results were. So I wanted to, what I want to do now is just to pause the video and start thinking about what patterns can you see in the data here. Okay, so we can clearly see that if we set up our transects, three different transects, uh, the further we go into the woodland, um, the percentage of bluebell increases. And we could have set a hypothesis and tested that hypothesis. What I'd like you to do is to calculate the mean value, and then we're going to look at um, that mean value um, and think about the pattern that you can see. An extra task for you to do here, which is what we'd normally do in class, is to draw a graph. So if you've got, um, if you want to do some graph practice, that would be really, really good. And you can pause the video and plot your mean value um, against the distance into the woodland. Here then, of course, the distance is our independent variable and our percentage um, cover is our distance is independent variable, distance independent variable, and the mean cover is our dependent variable. If you want to have a get some graph practice, and um, that'd be really good. And um, you can pause the video and have a go at doing that. So this is this is the kind of pattern that we would see, and we could suggest that from our data, from calculating our mean percentage cover, that as we walk further into the woodland, our mean percentage cover increases. Okay. And then we can start to think about the why that is. We know that the bluebells prefer the shady. Um, and cooler climate habitat. So we can start to think about our conclusion as to why that is. And in doing our conclusion, we want to start using data in our conclusion. Okay, picking on particular data points as we see here, and using both quantitative and qualitative data. So, just to kind of recap on a few things. Physical factors may affect the distribution of organisms. Quantitative data on the distribution of organisms can be obtained from random sampling using a quadra or sampling along a transect to find a trend. We've got some key terms here. If you want to pause and have a look at these key terms, these are um, scrambled key terms. Have a go at these. And what we're going to do now is have a look at this exam question. Okay. So the model answer to this would be a model answer if you get any kind of 
um, question on transects, okay? Um, and it's kind of a really, really good step-by-step -step method. So I want you to pause the video, just have a think about this question here. We've got a transect that has been set up along a stream, and you can see the kind of cross-section of that stream. And what this particular experiment is interested in is looking at the, the, di the different types of species that are um, that are there in, in a particular habitat. So describe how we, you would use a half metre by half metre quadrat frame and a 30 metre tape to measure, obtain, to obtain data similar to the data shown in the diagram. You should include details of how you would make sure that you would obtain valid results. So I want you to pause the video and just have a think. How would we write a step-by-step -step method for this? And if you want to have a go at writing a step-by-step -step method, please pause the video and have a go. Okay, so we've got the mark scheme here. You've got to make sure for a top answer that there's clear and logical detailed description of the method that produce valid repeatable results across uh, across uh, intervals along the stream. Um, so repeats are really important here. Systematic sampling is what we're trying to focus on here. Um, so we've got to make sure we use the tape measure and the place of the quadrats. You can see there the kind of examples of the points that you might make. What I've got here is, is a model answer, and this would get you full marks if you were to write this answer. So um, you can write this answer down. I, I would recommend that you do write this answer down as a model answer, and you can compare to what you've got. So we're in our stream. Let's imagine we're in our stream. The first thing we're going to do, we turn up on site, we're going to create a 12 metre long transept using the 30 metre measuring tape. You must mention the equipment that you're using. So we'd set up just a strip of land, we'd mark it out with maybe some, um, some string, um, 12 metres long by 1 metre, that goes all the way across. And that would be where we were sampling. We lay the transect across the stream, and at regular inter 1 metre intervals, um, we place the quadrat. And we must say 1 metre intervals, or give a specific um, measurement of our intervals in which we're going to sample, because this is a systematic sample. We would estimate the number of species uh, of times each species appears in the quadrat, and this process should then be repeated at least three times along the stream, so we'd randomly select a section of the stream, and then calculate the mean number of times each species appears from our three repeats. We'd compare our results of another person using the same method to see if the results were reproducible and valid. So that's our model answer. Um, compare your answer to the model answer, and then you can always write this down as well as an example. That being done, we then now have two methods that we need to be able to recall and kind of apply to different scenarios. We've got our um, random sampling using a quadrat, and we've got our systematic sampling using a transect. Okay, thanks very much, Year 10. If you've got any questions at all about the video, um, please, please do get in touch. Um, as of next week, we're going to be starting to do some, uh, some tutorials, um, so stay tuned for that, and I'll give some more details about that. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe.